I have three brothers, two older and one younger. And uh, just because it's a small place, my mom comes from 10 as well, so we're a very close family. So every Sunday we would um, uh, just have lunch at my grandparents, and uh, it just made us very close as a family. And so uh, it's really, my vocation is, is in large part due to my parents, my grandparents, and the prayers and support of my whole family. So it's the testimony to, to the beauty of the family and uh, that vocations come from holy families. So uh, continue to yeah pray and support uh, for your own children and grandchildren. Uh, my grandmother, I was just telling someone else too, was uh, had always prayed that one of her sons would become a priest. And she had 10 kids, five and five, five boys, five girls. And none of my uncles became priests, but I did. So. Those prayers kind of paid off a little bit later, um, but, but her example, her holiness, her life uh, was a great inspiration to me too, so, um, so keep those prayers coming for, you, for your grandchildren as well. Uh, so as a, from a young, young age, I didn't know that I was going to be a priest uh, as a little kid, but I did, I did love the Lord from a, a young age, and as far back as I can remember, had blessed with the gift of faith and just a desire to do God's will. I didn't know where that would lead me, but I just wanted to do his will. And so, um, you know, my parents were very influential, very, you know, they taught me to pray. They um, uh, put us through Catholic schools. So on the island, there's, there's a grade school that started in the 70s. And then the high school opened up when I was in sixth grade. So it was like 1994. And um, so I went all the way through, through, uh, through Catholic schools there as well. And our parish priest was very close to our family. He would just come over uh, once a week, really, pretty very often, and play bridge. He'd play cards with my parents and another friend of theirs. And without even realizing it, his presence, the, the Lord through him was planting seeds in my own heart. Uh, looking back at it, I can see that. And he was just a very holy man, uh, a very normal guy, regular guy, playing cards. He loved to joke and, you know, tease and all that. Uh, but he was a holy man as well. And I uh, just really looked up to him. And it was my last year in high school when he passed away. And I just remember being a altar server at his funeral. And the whole church was packed. And just seeing how many lives he touched and brought to the Lord, you know. Uh, that really inspired me to think about it more seriously. Um, before. Also, I kind of skipped over one part. Just with my mom, she had always told my brothers and I to, to be open to the priesthood. Because if that's God's will, then that's what's going to make you happiest. So it was always something as a possibility in the back of my mind. I didn't know that's where, where, you know, where the Lord was going to call me. But I, I remember praying and saying to the Lord, I'll do it, but you've got to like, let me know and, and, and help me to know that this is your will. And There was a period where I kind of agonized over it. Like, I just want to do your will. But, like, I didn't know, and it's like, how do you know? And, you know, all those kinds of questions. And, um, but with time, the Lord, you know, gave me that peace and, and helped me to see where he was calling me. Uh, oh, and one other important thing during high school was a Eucharistic Adoration Chapel at our parish opened up. It wasn't quite perpetual, but it was, we had uh, 7 a.m. Mass, so it would start after Mass and go till midnight. And I began to go over there just in my recess for, like, five minutes, five, and then that kind of grew. So I'd go over like a couple times, maybe twice a week for about five, ten minutes. And then I just wanted to go over more and more. And so uh, I would go during lunch and, and different free periods and stuff. So uh, the Eucharist is, uh, I mean, that's no surprise. Jesus is the, the reason why, uh, you know, a big part of the reason why, I know, the reason why I became a priest. But uh, praying in that chapel, um, just drawing closer to the Lord that way and being formed by him. Uh, so I went off to, to university. I went to the University of Notre Dame, and my older brother went there, the, the second brother. And uh, I, I mean, I like sports as well. It was just a good fit in terms of academics and athletics and everything else, um, and and uh, you know that it's Catholic university as well. And so I um, yeah I went there. But when I was in my second year, I was praying in the basilica. And I just remember, it wasn't like an overwhelming, you know, like some, some guys have a real like powerful moment. It wasn't quite like that. It was just very subtle. Um, 
that is like, yeah, I can be a priest. I, you know, I kind of want to be a priest. And, uh, but one thing happened after that. I, I started to become scrupulous, like kind of worrying about little things and uh, thinking either things that weren't sins were sins or that my sins were mortal sins. It, it was just, anyway. So I went through that, um, which was a real struggle for me, but it, it wasn't, when I came to graduating, it just wasn't the right time with all that. It was, um, I had a priest that I would, friend that I would talk to with some frequency, uh, more of a confessor. I wouldn't necessarily spirit, say spiritual direction, but um, would go and talk to him. And he kind of helped me through it, but it, I just wasn't quite ready to enter when it came to graduating. So instead, I did this program through Notre Dame called ECHO. And ECHO isn't geared towards becoming a priest, but it's, it was meant to get younger people working in parishes um, as DREs and, and in other other ways, a lot, a lot of the people have gone on to teach theology and so on in, in, in high schools. Um, so I did that. I was assigned to a parish um, out in Delaware on the East Coast. So I lived in community with two other guys there. They worked in other parishes there. And um, just kind of being away from, from college and, and kind of a new environment helped me to kind of step back a little bit and... and um, because just, I mean, Notre Dame's a great school, but it was a lot of work, and so I kind of burnt myself out. And anyway, so stepping back a little bit was was helpful. And uh, also just being in the parish, seeing, uh, you know, what I would do as a priest and uh, serving in a parish was, was a great help to me. Um, after that, I came, came back here uh, one of the weekends for a discernment weekend. And when I was on that weekend, I just, it was a lot of peace. And... Uh, that's a great sign from the Lord, this is where he wants you, and so I just uh, I applied and, and was accepted, and every, ever since I entered the seminary, my desire to become a priest only increased, so uh, it was some of the best years of my life in seminary, very blessed, and I mean, I've been blessed my whole life, and so I, I mean, it's not, it, it, I just love being in seminary, and, and uh, it's a great brotherhood and fraternity, so, uh, and now I'm at St. Paul's. And uh, it has, it just keeps getting better and better. I mean, it's been so blessed there, too. The families are very welcoming, been over to a lot of homes. Monsignor Halfpenny is a great mentor, lots of wisdom and experience. And uh, it's just a great fit for me as a, as a first assignment. So, um, yeah, it's just been, been wonderful. I love being a priest. So, I kind of talked a little fast, I know, but does anyone have any questions? That might be easier. Why to, Detroit? Oh, that's a good question. Okay, so when I was growing up, we were under the Archdiocese of Kingston, Jamaica, and uh, it was my last year of high school when Detroit took over, and I don't know all that went on and behind the scenes, but from what I understand, uh, the Archdiocese of Kingston just, they couldn't send us priests, or there are different reasons why uh, they didn't want to be sending priests to us anymore, and so the papal nuncio for the Caribbean was trying to find a, a diocese in the United States to help us. And I guess Cardinal Mida was at the meeting and was like, we'll do it. <laughs> and so we got connected to Detroit. And so uh, so I am a priest for the Archdiocese of Detroit. Um, they, the AOD still takes care of my home parish, St. Ignatius. And uh, uh, maybe one day I'll be there. I don't know. Um, but that's it's in the Lord's hands, and I'm very happy where I'm at. And uh, I'm just, yeah, one step at a time. So we'll see.